Hey there, friends. Coming back to you here with more coverage on the scene at Unbound in Emporia, Kansas. This is the pre-ride show presented by FSA. I'm Jim Miller. I get a chance to sit down here with Pete Stedna. Pete, how are you, man? I'm good. I'm back in Gravel City, USA. Well, doesn't it feel good? I mean, we, we've had this year of pent-up anxiety. We weren't getting the chance to race, and now here we are back at uh, one of the biggest events on the calendar, and the whole scene starting to explode. We got a beehive of activity here as the expo gets set up. It's got to feel really good as one of the premier athletes in the sport to know we're getting back to racing. It, it feels really good. Um, I think it's just, like you said, all that pent up energy and like for the last month, once this was like officially happening, uh, it's like every email thread was like, see you in Emporia. Like it's just like, that's what everyone's locked in on. Yeah. Um, so everyone is very, very excited. I want to think back to 2019, your win at BWR San Diego. And at the time, you were still a member of Trek Segafredo, but no doubt this privateer thing was bub bubbling in the background. Um, you made that transition, and you've done a really, in my opinion, an excellent job at, at promoting yourself and this whole concept of privateer. I can imagine, though, that there were a ton of lessons that you learned along the way, transitioning from the world tour rider that you were, where a lot of the things are taken care of for you, to having to, to operate and, and bring about all those things. What were some of those lessons that you learned in that process? Yeah, you know, it was a steep learning curve. I do not have a background in business or marketing, but um, it was a little bit trial by fire. And, you know, it's just, uh, I guess, a silver lining of 2020 was instead of, you know, I kind of got my rookie gravel season taken away from me, but I got to meet a lot more people in the industry on a more relaxed basis instead of in a race environment um, and actually like work with sponsors on alternative projects right such as like the funnest known time project yep. and the fastest known time but like working directly with sponsors and seeing kind of how that marketing world filming world take like actually happens behind the scenes um because in the world tour like literally you have a team pr handler and they just like they shepherd you to the event or to the the interview just like this you sit down you talk and then they take you up and bring you away and they deal with everything on the back end we're more, more robotic so, like oh, a lot yeah, of things are set up like, for you yeah it's it's a little bit just like dance monkey dance right right <laughs> but um and i know that sounds negative but it's just it's easy you know you're just like the talent um whereas now i i'm doing everything on my own but it's a lot more fun it's my own projects my own interactions my own schedule it's my own small business um so I think 2020 and, and into this year, the biggest learning curve and what I've really enjoyed is actually the business of cycling. Like that's what I've actually like learned a lot more about than even the racing. So in a way, the, the pandemic and the break caused you to be able to immerse yourself a little more in that without the pressure and the stress of racing. Meanwhile, you're going out and doing all these super challenging adventures, the, the FTKs, funnest and fastest known times. Mm -hmm. um, that looked really painful and, and a, a lot of them did like yeah. of, the, of the two big ones that you nabbed i know there's some leapfrogging going on um were there were either one stand out for a particular reason in terms of its its level of challenge and and physical um strength that it took to get it done bike racing is painful like it's just you know and that was whether it's an fkt or a, or a race you know it's it's a little different that you have to internally motivate it's just you against a clock on an unknown course you know but um it's it, the the white rim last year was very hard because it's a five and a half hour full gas time trial right. whereas the coca pelli this year was ten and a half hours but it's more of like a slow steady burn um i think the the total exhaustion after the white rim of like that intense five and a half hours was was worse because you're just like pinning it right right at that red line um Whereas you can't do that for 10 and a half hours. But, you know, it's that was all just really born in almost a feeling of a little bit guilt and, and loyalty to my sponsors who all jumped on this unknown project that is Pete the Privateer in late 2019, early 2020. And then pandemic just so instead of just sitting at home and, you know, like taking alternative lifestyle picks like i was i it was you know how do i still bring some sort of value without racing to the folks that believed in me and that are you know standing behind me and that was that's kind of where i went with fastest known time was um this is the best way to compete against each other even though we're years and miles apart right like it's individual efforts but we're competing still um 
And then funnest known time was just kind of like a byproduct of that, just another fun play on words. But it's like, yeah, like just killing myself for five and a half hours isn't actually that fun sometimes. <laughs> like <laughs> if you're really tight B it is every once in a while, that's my idea of fun. But, um, you know, usually like my funnest known time is sprinting up a hill for a KOM and then stopping at the swimming hole or getting a cookie or a post ride beer. So, you know, there's all different ways to have your own FKT. And we had like a little fun project on the side with that. Cyclists, the good ones anyway, are known for their ability to suffer and be able to take on that suffering and, and, and use it as motivation. For you, what goes through your mind in those moments? Because we all have we all have them, good or bad. You're feeling good on a tough a tough effort. You're not feeling so good. What goes through your mind when you're not feeling good? Is there personal motivations? Are these mantras that you repeat to tell yourself to keep going? Or are you just looking at that number and that wattage output and knowing that you've got to be at a certain place at a certain time? Um, no, there's always doubt creeping in at any level, right? And it is about kind of pushing that out into the periphery, even if you're not on a good day. So. Live action um, camera, bro. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> this is Gravel Town. Yeah, this is not a production set. Um, and uh, it's it's just about making peace with what's happening and trying to, if things aren't going well, finding a workaround through that. So I, I got pretty good at kind of finding like that that flow state, I guess, and just like really getting in the zone for five to ten hours and. Um, you know, there's always things to think about with, especially on mountain bike, because it's trail, there's there's nuances and changes in the trail yeah. and how to dose your effort and the fueling and all the logistics, both for FKTs and gravel racing on like the fueling strategy at aid stations and like where you're gonna filter water or grab water or whatever it is. So, you know, there's always something to focus on, but um, you know, like uh, when I actually missed the white rim by 16 seconds, the first effort, um, you know, I, I was so far down because of the sandy conditions, I had mentally given up. And then all of a sudden it came back to 16 seconds. And I was like, it was definitely like this, oh crap moment. Like if I had just believed for like those two hours where I kind of just like went into, I was still going hard, but just autopilot. So that was a valuable lesson is, you know, it, it's not over till it's over. And the same is gonna happen on Saturday here. You know, it's, um, you know, maybe Colin Strickland is up the road again, just like 2019. And if you're two minutes behind, like a flat, just like that, all of a sudden he's back to you. So you just have to, you have to have faith until the line's over. And then no matter where you are in your race, I think you can have solace and comfort in the fact that, you know, you dosed it, you gave it all, right? Like that you didn't leave anything out there because if you have regret at the finish line, that's the worst feeling. Yeah whether it, that like the, the placing is secondary, I would say. You talk a little bit about the fueling strategies and things like that. Much different approach than on the world tour with gravel. Right. Um, for those of us mortals that will never be at the pointy end of one of these races, what goes on in that group? Is there some discussion? Is there a, hey, we're coming up on a stop here. We're all gonna stop. And there's a little detente yeah. called at that point, or is it kind of every man for himself, even though you guys are good friends off the bike? Um, it, it's, it's changing and evolving as more people are coming to gravel, which we want more fast folks. And by we, I mean, Colin, Ted, Ian sure. Boswell, Pace, and myself, these guys who are kind of at the front of, of this men's back. And the women are saying the same thing, sure, but sure. you know, I'm directly in like this men's lead group. And um, you know, at Gravel Locos recently, it was, you know, hey, you're low on water, you're out of water, you're low on water. Okay, guys, like at this aid zone in five miles, everyone stop, take a minute, fill your bottles, roll out, we'll meet on the other side, and then like game on. This group comes um, back together. And that was it. And then one guy literally was sitting on all day and he attacked in the feed zone. Ooh. And then when we finally caught him again, he sat on us again. And that royally pissed Colin and myself and, and uh, many others off. Um, <laughs> I bet he I, paid for that in a certain uh, respect, yes. Yeah, um, but you know, that's, we. a lot of us are hoping that that doesn't become the norm. Um, unfortunately, well, not unfortunately, Unbound is so big that you have people coming from many different angles who really just care about the result instead of the experience. So um, I hope that a lot of us can just kind of lead by example a little bit and it's just about trying to message and market that you know play it cool and race with honor um and if, if your heart's in in the right place you know you're going to be welcomed with open arms yeah don't roadie my gravel ride bro 
right? <laughs> right, coming from the roadie. <laughs> it's true, it's so true. Um, you talked about you, you, you're, you get to work with a lot of the great brands in the industry. And I'm you mentioned privileged. before we started rolling here that this new grizzle from Canyon and the color scheme and things like that were built around a personal story. Can you share that yeah. with us in terms of what all that means? So this is the never before seen, like literally never before. Ooh. You guys have it first. Pure gravel, pre-ride show exclusive so here with Pete Stetna. This is my custom race jersey for Unbound and for a majority of the coming season. I was privileged enough that Canyon actually had a, uh, a designer look at my whole life story and cre help me create a better brand around it. So what you're seeing here is the color is an allude to the Southwest where I'm happiest, the American West where I have a, most of my, um, my adventures. It's kind of, uh, the, the color kind of evokes like that uh, desert sure, sunset, sure. you know? Yeah. The desert sunset, the, the purple, the orange, the pinks. Um, you'll see it's very distressed, like it almost looks like it's muddy. So- A little nod know, to Coco Pelli here. You would never, uh, well, so, so the distressed, you would never actually trust uh, a cowboy in clean, clean white threads. The okay. same should be true for a tried and true gravel pro. Right. They're a little worse for wear. They've been through the, the ringer a few times. And then these are raccoon paw prints. Okay. And the raccoon is my spirit animal. Right on. Uh, it chose me, I did not choose it. That's but, how it uh, works. They're scrappy. If they're cornered, they get real mean real fast. They can eat anything and create energy <laughs> off of it. And they have these horrible tan lines. I have these all year round, even in the winter, <laughs> I got the, the goggle tan. So um, I'm the raccoon. This is my Southwestern inspired Jersey and the bike matches. Love it. So that is super pro when you know you get your bike to match your story and custom painted like that. Yeah. Let's check the rest of the setup. Um, you're going with aero bars. This course would, would uh, you found in the past that it requires it or you're gonna be better suited if you got them. Yeah, you know, um, I'm totally fine on the whole aero bar topic. Um, if an organizer says they're not allowed, great. I'm just as happy with that. But you know, if people are running them here and you're not, you're at a disadvantage. That's just the facts. Um, so, uh, and in gravel, they're called comfort bars. At some point out there, you're gonna be on your own. And it's really nice to change the hip position, change the wrists, the off weight, the wrists, you know, change the, all of it, you know, just rest of it. Um, so this is my custom Canyon Grizzle for Unbound. Um, again, themed artwork. Um, it's all Shimano build. Um, Dura Ace front with the power meter, all GRX, the rest of it. Um, the Canyon vibration dampening seat post, pro bags, gravel bars with flare, the aero bars, electronic shifting in the aero bars, the new Wahoo bolt because it's smaller and it fits right between my aero bars. Um, the IRC double cross 42, I'm rolling with the 42s. Um, it's pretty bumpy out there right now. I pre-rode it yesterday yep. a little bit. So I hope that, I, th I believe this is the fastest setup. Um, and uh, we'll, we will see you in a few days. Love it. That's so. beautiful. Thank you. Looks fast just sitting there. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. Um, recently, there has been a bit of a European invasion finding its way to the US gravel scene. Right. A lot of your former compatriots on the world tour um, have decided to come on over and give it a shot. Um, how do you feel about that? What's that, uh, what's that mean to you? Again, it goes back to, I'm, I'm stoked. Um, you know, I, I'm very adamant that I believe gravel is its own discipline. And as long as your heart is in the right place and you're not trying to just come in and take fame and money and sponsorship dollars, but you're trying to help grow this discipline at the same time, the more the merrier. By no means is this like a, a turf war. Um, Lawrence gets it. He is super fun to race with. He will, ha he will drink you under the table afterwards if you challenge him to it. <laughs> he he is the right guy for this. Um, I, uh, Keel Reinen is one of my best buds from Trek. He sure. gets it. Um, you know, and the even at the point of the race, you know, for me the competition is secondary, and I'm not trying to like devalue what's about to happen on Saturday, but it's, you know, it's 
it's about that shared experience, you know, and whether or not that's first or third or 50th or the midnight club at Unbound, like, you know, I, I've said this many times, but, you know, beer is great for celebrating and it's great for commiserating. And at the finish line, it's going to be there and we're going to come together and we're going to have a lot of stories. That's a similar theme that we've heard from people in your position, the higher ends of the sport and everybody else. And I think personally, that's one of the beautiful things about gravel in this world that's exploding right now in these types of rides, events, races, whatever you want to call them. Yeah. It's a race for some, it's an experience for everybody that does it. Yeah. Um, it's, it's become a, just a fabulous thing. Um, in addition to all the things you have to do, privateer, marketing, promoting, um, you've added another title. Uh, and that's race promoter, event promoter. Um, <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about that. What's uh, what's going on? What do you got going on um, out there? So Stetna's pay dirt happened September 11th in Carson City, Nevada. Um, it was a road fondo in the Tahoe area where I lived part time for a few years when I was a world tour pro. Um, with my move to gravel, I started exploring this unknown to most mountain range outside of Carson City called the Pine Nut Mountains. And I'm saying like there were no Strava heat maps, there were, there were no trail maps. So it was just like, get out there, oh, dead end, sand bog, flat tire, like call for help. Call That's for the help. ultimate private team. And like we finally- Literally digging new yeah, trails. And we finally punched a way through and we have a really cool course. Um, and we decided to make a gravel event out of it. Um, it's pretty unique in that um, it's got its whole own set of rules. Uh, so, you know, there's no sanctioning body here, you know, me and my partners are making the house rules. Um, so the nuances of the ride are, it's two long time segments with okay. a big aid station in the middle. Okay. So you can race and find the right group or take as much time at the aid station as you need. But it's two, I mean, I'm talking like an hour or two time segments, but it's not just start to finish go. So okay. you can enjoy the entire course and experience better. We have non-traditional time bonuses. So there is a Wahoo sponsored mechanical bull. There is an IRC sponsored tire keg lasso and you play at the expo for time bonuses. So if it comes down to a sprint for the win and you tie on time, it's going to be like, oh, you guys got to ride the bull to see the winner. Like, and whoever stays on the bull the longest, that's their time bonus. Do you get to operate the bull though? Are you pulling the, who gets to pull the trigger on that? I don't know. It, that depends on the uh, liability waiver. <laughs> don't sue me. But, um, so that'll be fun and unique. Um, and then we've also decided to make the women the headliners. Um, I've been racking my brain a little bit on how to better support uh, gender equality in cycling. Um, and we, we call that a bro dozer. Bro dozer, love it, bro okay. Um, it's, all, I have a unique angle because my whole career uh, in these televised world races, if, if there was a women's race, it was usually treated as the opening act right. to the men earlier in the morning, a quarter of the prize money, whatever it is. So, you know what, like, let's flip the script. Like, you know, guys, there's gonna be a great race, there's gonna be a podium, there will be prizes, but there's no prize money. And you're gonna have a great day. Like a lot of us are not racing gravel for prize money. If you are, that's, you know, that's, that's not yeah. the, you're not making a living. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but women, partner with Shimano, um, they are gonna be highlighted. That's where we're drumming up the attention, the drama beforehand. And there is $4,000 of prize money. And what I just said in, saying they're not racing for prize money, that's true. But I think still racing for a prize and putting that in front of the men's race um, is an effort to bring um, more exposure. And what I feel will help women cycling the most is more exposure leads to better contracts, better endorsements, sure. more media attention, the front of the race, more personal exposure for these, these women who are working just as hard as, as myself and, and the sure. men. Um, and it speaks to the inclusion that I think gravel is really all about. You know, yeah. we're, we're really trying to broaden it and bring more people in and give them the benefits of the things that they don't get in the other yeah. aspects of the sport. Yeah, so um, yeah, registration just opened uh, last week. We're doing well, We uh, Carson City and Nevada is pretty open for now. Okay. I, we're not gonna be the size of Unbound, but um, their spaces. So if anyone fancies uh, coming out and supporting a, a new event in a cool area in the Tahoe foothills, um, yeah. 
Sounds great. Um, real quick, got to got to check in with you on this. How you feeling? The fitness is nice and tight. Yeah. Uh, expectations for Saturday? Um, I, I would love to win. You know, that's I'm not gonna be uh, subtle about that. You know, I was second in 2019. There's only one place more to step up. Um, you know, that said, I I know a lot can happen. The field is stronger than ever. Yep. Um, but you know, I'm feeling good. Um, this has been a very crazy week with, this is now, you know, the, the Tour de France of gravel. So bike launches, new, you know, product launches, photo shoots, this interview with you, which I'm having so much fun, but like, there's a lot sure. this week. Um, but I've done a good job at kind of front loading these. We're talking on Thursday. So tomorrow I can hopefully take the foot off the gas and focus on the, uh, the effort at hand. And, you know, again, like I said, whatever the result is, you know, as long as I finish with a, a good feeling in 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 my soul and and uh knowing i left it out there i really really hope that's the top step but well the one thing i know about you is you don't you're not going to not leave it all out there that's for sure <laughs> are we going to see I you promise. back in san diego at bwr it's the title defense yes Gotta come back uh B bwr san diego um that is the other most important race on my calendar um those are probably where the, the biggest results wise is focused for me is unbound in BWR. Um, in terms of Stoke, I would actually argue that the rise of gravel stage racing is where I'm really excited. There's okay. the Oregon trail stage race, the trans Rockies stage race. And these are lifestyle camp life parties with point to point racing in between campsite to campsite, but BWR San Diego, I mean, that was where I fell in love with gravel. That was my first taste of it. That's what, kicked off this whole privateer movement. So that is definitely um, the apple of my eye too. Can't wait to have you back. Thanks. Um, to, to wrap up, to summarize, bro dozer, we learned a new term, <laughs> uh, raccoon, okay? Yep. And um, open, ex inclusivity, bringing more people into the sport. That's what it's all about. And don't be a jerk. Sounds simple <laughs> enough to me. Uh, Pete, I want to thank you for your time, man. Thank you. Best of luck on Saturday. We're going to be pulling for you and uh, know you're going to do really, really well. Cheers. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Pre-Ride Show presented by FSA. We appreciate you looking in. Subscribe to the YouTube channel and click that little bell next to it so you get notified of all the other great uh, interviews we're going to be dropping throughout the next couple days.